not that powerful. Right to the point. Hallelujah. Let's turn to the Lord in prayer. Father, we thank you so very much for your goodness, for your mercy, for all your blessings. We thank you especially on this day, Mother's Day, and we honor the mothers. We thank you for each and every one. Many of them have gone through a lot of different stresses, a lot of different turmoil and trials. We just ask that you bless each one, heal all the hurts, all the discouragements, Lord, take care of them. Just bless each one and be with you to your glory in Jesus' name. And, well, we've been taking up the book of Ruth. We're going to finish it today. We're going to do chapter 3 and chapter 4. We started with the whole idea that uh, a lot of people uh, have broken dreams. A lot of people have uh, real heartaches. A lot of people have a lot of struggles in one way or another. And um, it, uh, it, 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 a lot of disappointments in life. Okay, we'll put it that way. And uh, Naomi was one of them. So we start with the first chapter talking about how she became bitter. Then we talk, saw in the second chapter how God was working things behind the scenes. And to me, that's a real encouragement. No matter what you're going through right now, God is working things behind the scenes. You sell out to Jesus. You live for Jesus. You let him... Be the Lord of your life, and he will turn things around. He will bless you. He'll minister to you. He'll give you the grace to go through whatever you have to be going through right now. Because he loves you. He loves you deeply. So we get to the third chapter, and it starts with the whole idea of uh, Ruth at the threshing floor. We'll pick it up in chapter 3, verse 1. One day Naomi said to Ruth, My daughter, it's time that I found a permanent home for you so that you will be provided for. Boaz is a close relative of ours, and he's been very kind by letting you gather grain with your with his young women. Tonight you'll be winnowing barley at the threshing floor. Now do as I tell you, take a bath, put on a perfume, and dress in your nice clothes, then go to the threshing floor. But don't let Boaz see you until he's finished eating and drinking. Be sure to notice where he lies down. Then go and uncover his feet and lie down there. He'll tell you what to do. Uh, I'll do everything you see, he said. So she went down to the threshing floor that night and followed the instructions of her mother-in-law. Uh, sometimes you get the wrong idea here, and I'll bring that up in a minute. But what, I, what really strikes me here... Naomi is always concerned about Ruth and about other people. Okay? And that's a mother's heart. Now, they know it's a mother-in-law, a daughter-in-law relationship, but mother-in-laws and daughter-in-laws, mothers and daughters, uh, there's a heart there, concern for other people and putting other people first. See, at this point, Ruth is out there, Cleaning the fields and providing for Naomi. But Naomi, more concerned about Ruth. I got an idea. You know, there's a thing that we do in Israel here where if a husband dies, the next one in line marries him. Okay? So generally the old yeah, okay, the oldest uh, guy in the family dies, the second um, man marries him. So you're marrying your sister-in-law. Okay? And that's the way they provided for them. Now, we think, and that's kind of crazy, but it was way back before the law, way back at the time of Abraham and Isaac, they did that very thing. And it was a way that God had provided so that widows could live and have something to live on. Because widows were notoriously uh, poor, destitute, and so they had to have something to live on because most of them come to work in the field. By the time you're a widow, normally you're getting older. Naomi must have been older. She could go moving on in the field. So it's the way God provided for us. Now, it, sh it seems strange to us, but it's sure better than some of the other societies. You know what they did in India? When a man died, and they buried him, they burned men, you know, burned the corpses. <coughs> But you, as a wife, were expected to get on that bonfire and die with your husband. And that's what often happened. Uh, that was forbidden in about 1950, but it was still carried out in many places in India. So 
in some ways, <coughs> what they did there was that uh, if you're a wife, you made sure your husband uh, was taken care of so he didn't die early. Okay? So, but in Israel, they had this thing that's called the Redeemer. Uh, as a closest relative, a kinsman Redeemer, the closest relative to Mary. So, verse 7. After Boaz had finished eating and drinking and was in good spirits, he lay down at the far end of the pile of grain and went to sleep. Then Ruth came quietly and covered his feet and lay down. Around midnight, Boaz suddenly woke up and turned over. He was surprised to find a woman lying at his feet. Who are you? he asked. I'm your servant, Ruth. She answered. Spread the corner of your covering over me, for you are my family redeemer. Lord bless you, my daughter Boaz. Explain. You are showing even more family loyalty now than you did before. For you have not gone after younger men, whether rich or poor, poor. Now don't worry about a thing, my daughter. I'll do what's necessary for everyone in town, though you are a virtuous woman. But while it's true that I am one of your family redeemers, there's another man who is more closely related to you than I am. Stay here tonight and in the morning I'll talk to him. If he is willing to redeem you, very well, let him marry you. But if he is not willing, then he as surely the Lord lives, I will redeem you myself now. Lie down here until morning. <laughs> now, a lot of people think, oh, that, that's a real sexual sort of connotation. Not really. That's not, uh, this was normal. In fact, servants often laid down at the feet of their master. And sometimes they even shared covers with each other because a lot of the servants didn't have a whole lot. Uncovered. So it's kind of interesting how this all worked out for Naomi and for Ruth. So Ruth lays down there, and like I say, it wasn't a sexual nature of the thing, but it was really what God had established for uh, provision. Now, why did she do this just during the daytime? Why did she wait till the evening? I think a very uh, real reason for that is simply that if she does it during the daytime, she could end up embarrassing Boaz, okay? He could have and say, no, 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 I don't have anything to do with it. But approaching him at night, when no one else was around, it was really a stroke of wisdom. And Naomi's the one that thought of it and told him what to do. So if you think, oh, this is a whole, she's hitting on him, now in a way, she's asking him to be her husband, that's true. But that's the way things worked at that time. So, uh, so verse uh, 14. So Ruth lay at Boaz's feet until morning, but she got up before it was light enough for people to recognize each other. And Boaz said, no one must know that a woman was here at the threshing floor. Then Boaz said to her, bring your cloak and spread it out. He measured six uh, scoops of barley into the cloak and placed the, her back. And then he returned to the town. The key here, I think, is, uh, uh, you know, sometimes we do things that uh, may cause people to uh, think uh, badly, of, uh, badly of it. I think there's a principle, avoid all appearance of evil. And that's something I think people really need to look at and really do. And I think most people really do. Sometimes we fall into situations that you know, wonder what happened. Uh, but avoid all appearance of evil. Let me tell you a story that happened to uh, me one time. And um, I may have shared it to some of you. Uh, when we were quite young in the ministry, um, we, uh, a, a lady called, and she wanted if I'd come over and counsel her. And so we set up the following week, um, I felt like a Thursday night or something. And uh, I said, uh, so she called that day and says, are you still coming tonight to counsel me? I said, yeah, my wife's coming too. Oh, she's coming, forget it. <laughs> Now, you can see what her motives were, what her idea was. The thing is, Karen and I always have tried to work together every time we counseled anybody to avoid all appearance of evil and to prevent anything like that happening. Because a lot of times that happens. And a lot of pastors, we had a lady that came to our Bible study. This was long before we had a church. You guys may have been there. You probably you may remember. Uh, she gave a prophetic word, which was off the wall. And uh, Kenny Knight uh, told us, he was at the service too. 
And he said, boy, that one's way off the wall. Come to find out, do you remember that? Good thing. Okay. <laughs> then I can go on and tell the rest of the story. <laughs> Uh, we checked that lady out, and here she had seduced three other pastors, one in our area, one in Duluth, and one in Minneapolis, I believe, and when we checked back on her record. Uh, and I told her, I don't know how she does it. She wasn't very good looking at all. But uh, anyway, that's all the whole other story. The thing is, there are people out there that want to destroy your reputation. Maybe not just for a pastor, anybody. Uh, I know a friend of mine who's a pastor in Minneapolis, a girl came to him one time and said, don't you want counseling? She says, uh, actually, what I really want, I want to seduce you to bed. And she says, uh, I belong to a sorority in order to make my place after a bed with a doctor, a lawyer, and a minister. This is a sorority in Minneapolis. Anyway, the thing is, this was not one of those things. This was totally and completely on the ups and ups. And what she was doing and why she went at night was not to embarrass them. And uh, so uh, it worked out well. When Ruth went back to her mother-in-law, Naomi asked, what happened, my daughter? Ruth told Naomi everything. Boy, has it done for her. And she had, he gave me six scoops of barley. Don't go back to your mother-in-law empty-handed. And so it goes on from there. The thing is that uh, really strikes me here is uh, she goes back. Can't you just see Naomi and Ruth? Just what happened? You know, two women talking, giggling, excited, probably never, never, you know, didn't get anything accomplished that day, waiting for what would happen. And not only that, the night before, I bet Boaz and Naomi and Ruth, none of them slept that night. <laughs> okay? Wondering what would happen. We also can as we look through here, it's thinking, Boaz must have been thinking somewhat about Miriam, uh, Ruth, okay, to redeem her. I think because he came to that conclusion so quickly and so willingly, so he must have been thinking of it. But he wasn't the first one in line. Chapter 4, number 2 in your line, Boaz at the town gates. Boaz went to the town gates and took a seat there. Uh, just then, the family redeemer he had mentioned came by. The boys called out to him, "Come over here and sit down, friend. I want to talk to you." So they sat down together. And boys called ten leaders from the town and asked them to sit as witnesses. Uh, the, and boys said to the family redeemer, "You know Naomi, who came back from Moab. She is selling the land and belongs to our relative Elimelech. I thought I should speak to you about it so that you can redeem it." as you wish. If you want the land, then buy it here in the presence of these witnesses. If you don't want it, let me know, because I'm the next in line to redeem it after you. The man replied, all right, I'll redeem it. Then Boaz tells him, of course your purchase the land from Naomi also requires it to marry Ruth, the Moabite widow. That way she can have children who will carry on her husband's name and keep the land in the family. As we read on down, he said, oh, I can't do it. Okay, can you imagine the situation here? This guy goes, oh, hey, I got, I'm going to increase my estate. I'm going to get all this land of uh, my, uh, probably the uh, brother. Uh, he's probably the brother of the husband. Uh, they owe me something. I'll get it straight here. Uh, probably that's the way it worked out in this case. But the thing is that <laughs> uh, he forgot he had to marry Ruth as part of the deal. So he not only got the land, he also got the bonus of a wife. Okay? And he didn't want that. It might correct his own uh, uh, estate. So we'll drop down here. Uh, uh, if, uh, number three is uh, Boaz marries Ruth. And we'll drop down to verse 13. We're going to skip a little of that here. So Boaz took Ruth into his home, and she became his wife. And when he slept with her, the Lord enabled her to become pregnant, and she gave birth to a son. Okay? God always has a way of restoring things. And so God provided for uh, uh, Ruth to be able to have a child. It's interesting. She couldn't have a child with her first husband. Okay? For some reason, couldn't have one. But she can have one here now. So... Uh, the thing is, Ruth got a redeemer, she got a husband, and she got a son. I say that 
just to say this for her and for Naomi, what happened here was that uh, God blessed them in a fantastic way. They, they ran into some really, really rough times, some real bad heartaches, some real difficult times. Naomi's husband died, her two sons died, and she goes back home desolate, bitter, but God turns it around. Uh, as we read down through here, uh, verse uh, 14, that the women of the town said to Naomi, Praise the Lord, who has not provided a redeemer for your family. May this child be famous in Israel. Little did they know how famous this child would be. May he restore your youth and care for you in your old age, for he is the son of your daughter-in-law who loves you and has been better to you than seven sons. Naomi took the baby and cuddled him in her breast, and she cared for him as he went, as if she was their own. The neighbor woman said, Now at last, Naomi has a son again. They named him Obed. He became the father of Jesse and the grandfather of David. And then, down through the line, Jesus also came from that line. Now, what I want to really stress here is simply this fact that uh, Naomi has been very uh, what? depressed, bitter, discouraged. And there's a lot of people that, that are in that position right now. In fact, a lot of mothers, I think, are in that position. They're discouraged. Things haven't worked out the way they are. Now, when I started this message, this series, I, I felt the Lord say, preach through Ruth. And uh, I had never thought that, you know, I'm going to end up on Mother's Day. But I think God had it all planned because Naomi was a mother with a lot of heartaches. And there's a lot of mothers with a lot of heartaches. Uh, and fathers too, but mothers especially, because mothers think of things a lot differently than us men. And so there's a lot of heart things that often will with the whole thing of motherhood. Uh, maybe children don't work, work out quite the way, maybe marriages don't work out quite the way they think. Uh, maybe you have some loss, some you know, big, big problems, maybe financial loss, some sickness or one thing or another. Maybe you said, you know, God's still in control. You turn your life over to Jesus Christ. No matter what you're going through, mothers, fathers, kids, whatever, turn your life over to Jesus Christ, and he can bring something very sweet and very beautiful out of it. He sure did for the only. And for Ruth, okay? She lost her husband when he was quite young. And it ends up that she married one of the richest guys in Bethlehem, has a son that eventually becomes the father, grandfather of David, and way down the line, uh, the father of Jesus Christ, or at least in that family line. So, a lot of times our disappointments, God wants to turn around for his appointments. Don't give up. Trust God that whatever you're going through at the present time, God's right there with you. God's watching over you, and God will take care of you. Like I said, there's a lot of disappointment sometimes with mothers. And on this Mother's Day, whatever you've gone through, whatever you're going through, I say, release it to the Lord. Ask Him to take those disappointments away and change them into His appointments. Believe God that He can and will work all things together for good because you have a lot of things. <coughs> Some of you are hurting. Sometimes you got some unforgiveness deep down in your heart against, you know, people that have hurt you. Uh, give it all over to Jesus. Let him minister to you. And he'll bring some great things out of it for you. Uh, Terry, can you do an illustration? <laughs> uh, Terry had gone through some big disappointments, okay? Um, Logan didn't uh, serve the Lord for a long time. And uh, some of her family was kind of, you know, kind of left the Lord. But God's turning things around. Healing a relationship. And I think that whole thing can really be an encouragement to all of us. She gave it all over to the Lord. And uh, whatever, I think she said one time, whatever needs to be done, Lord, I want to see him saved. Mm -hmm. So, Turn your loved ones over to the Lord. Let him work on their behalf in your life. 
and see what God will do. Okay? Um, before we uh, close this section of the service, I'd like to just pray for every mother. And uh, just, um, you know, I was hoping they'd have the fathers here to lay hands on them, but we don't, okay? So let's have a general prayer. And if you need more ministry afterwards that, that you know, you've hurt some wounds, whatever's going on in your life, uh, come on up and we'll be glad to pray for you, okay? As we worship you more. But Father, I just pray for, especially the mothers today, Lord. Many of them have a lot on their plate. Many of them work so hard and so diligently. Sometimes the families, the kids, the husbands have not been where they were supposed to be and maybe have hurt them deeply and maybe done things that have really destroyed maybe the marriage or at least the relationship with them or the kids. Father, I pray for each uh, marriage or each blessed each marriage and strength. I pray for each um, child, that, uh, each mother has a child that's wayward right now. I pray to reach out and touch that child. May they return and call their mother blessed in the name of Jesus. Lord, heal all the hurts, all the disappointments. We give it all over to you, Lord. We're going to trust that you're working in our lives to bring about something positive and wonderful in our lives. Because you love us, Lord. We know you do. You said in your word you love us. And so we so appreciate what you're doing. We don't understand right now. We don't see all right now what's going on. We do trust.